Hi there, my name is Emma and I'm from Los Angeles. Please like and subscribe. I was born to workaholic parents, so I didn't see them much growing up. My babysitter didn't find me too interesting either. She'd spend hours watching TV, watching weird wrestling competitions on the TV, while I would spend endless hours drowning my face in fashion magazines. It was my dream to start my own clothing line someday, and it would be so successful that my parents wouldn't have to work another day in their life and spend all their time with me. When I turned 16, mom and dad got me admitted into one of the best schools in the city and took me shopping to get some new stuff. I was smitten by this gorgeous designer handbag. Mom, can I have this, please? Emma, that's $3,000. We can't afford that. Not after that expensive school. Really? You work so much, I thought we were rich. Mom gave me a weird look and we left. But I couldn't take the bag off my mind, so I decided to make my own money. I made lemonade stands, mowed lawns, and walked every rich person's dog that needed to run, even ones twice my size. Wait, boy, not so fast! Right before the term started, I'd earned enough to buy a fake bag, and it looked somewhat similar. My first day, the entire parking lot was packed, but just then I found a cozy spot in corner. Slowly, I made my way in, feeling like a pro, until I heard an awful screeching sound. I'd hit a car and made a huge dent. While I was reeling in shock, calculating the damage, a tall boy stopped and stared at me. Wow, that's as big as the Grand Canyon. Good job. Sarcasm is not helping, dude. Do you have any idea whose car this is? Uh, let me see. Looks like mine. Sure enough, he unlocked the door and tossed his backpack inside. My mind went into overdrive. How could he be so indifferent after I dented his very pricey looking car? I I'm, I'm so sorry. This is totally my fault. I'll make it up to you. Cool. Get it repaired then. I looked at him confused. There was no way I could afford to repair the damages. Before I could respond, he inched closer and I swear he smelled like oranges. Or you could agree to go on a date with me. Your call. Take your time. There's no rush. I'm Caleb, by the way. He was cute, but I'd barely met the guy. I thought about it hard before saying yes, and later found out that Caleb was freaking rich. His dad owned a multi-million dollar company, and basically everyone's parents at school worked for his father. He was like a huge deal. Caleb and I went on several dates after that, and I grew to like him. He was a great listener and totally grounded. I want to start a business of my own one day, like a super cute fashion line. That sounds ambitious, but I'm sure you'll pull through. I can feel it. A month later, when he asked me to be his girlfriend, he filled my car with roses and a giant stuffed teddy bear. I was happy, but the girls in school just went bonkers. On our first date as a couple, Caleb gifted me an expensive handbag, the original version of my fake one. Wow, that's awesome, but I can't take this. You're my girlfriend now, and you only deserve the best. Caleb insisted, and I couldn't say no. It was my favorite brand after all. One day after school, Caleb invited me to his place where he lived all by himself. While he swam in his private pool, I sketched new fashion designs in my journal. What do you think? Very chic. You know you don't have to work, right? I'll have more than enough money to support us. I know, but this is my dream, and I want to do this for myself. Whatever floats your boat, love. Just remember, I'll always be there for you. That summer, I decided to take a business class at a local community college, and I was by far the youngest one there. Not that I cared. I belonged there. I was busy concentrating on what the professor was saying when a heavy voice interrupted me. So, professor, you know all this from your successful businesses? I turned around to see a cute guy in the back corner leaning in his chair with his feet propped up on the desk. Excuse me? I'm just saying, if you knew anything about marketing, you wouldn't be teaching. They went back and forth for a while. My professor got angrier and angrier while the boy remained calm. I couldn't believe how rude he was, but I had to agree. He wasn't entirely wrong. After class, I decided to grab lunch at the college dining hall. I was finishing a sketch in my journal when that rude boy came behind me in line. Is that meant for a unicorn? Excuse me? So now you're a PhD in designing too? That's designing? Let me show you something. Listen, I don't know what your deal is, but you cannot insult. Before I could finish, he pulled out his phone and showed me a clothing website 
filled with plain black t-shirts, and they were listed at over $100 each. This is my business. These boring black tees? You could get these anywhere. He clicked a few apps and showed me his bank statements. The number almost made me fall backwards. How could this guy be making thousands of dollars selling regular old t-shirts? I don't get it. Why are you even taking classes? What can I say? I'm a sucker for knowledge. You're crazy. Actually, I'm Eric, and you need a better teacher. Someone who knows how to make big bucks in real life and not some loser professor. He went on to cut me in line and buy the cheapest thing on the menu. For a while, I avoided Eric like the plague. I didn't want my work associated with him. But the more I researched about his business, the more I realized I needed his expertise. He could sell t-shirts just from the hype alone. So that following week, I put my pride aside and asked him to tutor me. Little did I know, it would turn out to be my biggest mistake. He talked way too fast and laughed at all my questions. He even made me work the customer service line for his business to understand how businesses work. I complained about Eric to Caleb all day. He's so rude and mean. I don't even know how to deal with him. Drop his classes then. I can't do that. He's good at what he does, and I can genuinely learn so much from him. Then take his attitude with a pinch of salt. Anyway, I have something that'll cheer you up. I want you to meet my parents. I was shocked. I only ever saw his dad on billboards or on TV commercials. Being nervous was an understatement. We met them at an expensive Italian restaurant in town the next week. His dad stood up to shake my hand, but when I looked over his shoulder, I saw none other than my tutor sitting at the same table. You must be Emma. We've heard great things. I... Just then, Caleb saw Eric too, and he seemed mad. What are you doing here? Not even a hello, brother? Brother? My head spun in a million circles. Eric and Caleb? Brothers? Caleb looked ready to fight him until their father got in between them. I invited him here, son. He's still family. Caleb backed off, but I was still in shock. And to make matters worse, Eric pretended he'd never met me. Caleb's parents ordered me all kinds of delicious courses, but I couldn't find the stomach to eat anything. And after dinner, Caleb took me straight home and angrily drove off without saying goodbye. During our next tutoring session, I was still fuming when Eric walked up. Why didn't you tell me about your family? You never asked. And besides, I didn't think we're that close. What do you mean? You're related to my boyfriend and you... Yeah, that's kind of unfortunate. You're not really his type, to be honest. That's not the point. I can't deal with this. I'm leaving. Wait, Emma. I'm sorry. I was just being a jerk. I calmed down as Eric spoke that he had been estranged from his family for two years because he refused to take over the family business. His clothing line was a result of wanting to prove he could make something successful without being connected to them. Part of me understood. I still wanted to pursue my clothing line dream, even though Caleb said I didn't have to. When I told Eric, he didn't laugh, but he seemed impressed. Take out your computer. You're making a website today. Eric helped me create my website from scratch. As usual, he was going super fast and I scrambled to keep up. But when I looked in my laptop reflection and saw him laugh, he looked different to me. Almost attractive. Snap out of it, Emma. He's your boyfriend's brother. My website was good, but for the first few days, I didn't get many orders. But I didn't lose hope and continued sketching and building my brand. I worked on them for days until one night I got a call from Caleb and he sounded a bit off. Want to talk about it? Not really, but I have a surprise for you. Caleb told me that he'd put my name in a small fashion show for new designers. I couldn't believe it. Oh, you really shouldn't have. Yes, I should, and yes, I will. I've decided to be more supportive of your dream. That's... thank you. I was over the moon that day, but when I told Eric, he didn't sound as impressed. It's just a small show. Yeah, but it's big for me. And maybe after this, I might actually get some customers. You will come to the show, won't you? You're inviting me? Well, you've helped me get this far. It would be rude of me not to. When the day came, I peered at the audience behind the curtain. I was blown away to see Eric sitting in the back row. I was glad he showed up. Too glad to admit. Once my models were ready, they were off strutting down the catwalk wearing my designs. Surprisingly, the audience went crazy. 
I walked out and bowed with the last model and then jumped into Caleb's arms. Behind his shoulder, Eric was watching and he looked irritated. By the time I made my way to the back of the room, Eric was gone. The show had tremendously boosted my sales. Caleb invited me to his parents' home to celebrate. My brother will be there, sorry. Why do you hate him so much? He's a total jerk. Anyone would kill to get my father's business, but he would rather do his own thing. <sighs> Whatever, joke's on him, I get the business now. Caleb's words didn't sit right with me, but I kept it to myself. We got to his mansion, and my eyes instantly started searching for Eric, but he didn't show up. We were halfway into the party when Eric strode through the door with a girl. Guess I wasn't missed. Mom, Dad, this is Angelica. My stomach turned. Since when did Eric have a girlfriend? By the looks on everyone's faces, they were thinking the same thing. Angelica's a model from New York. She has her own beauty brand. The more I watched them interact, the more I felt sick. It didn't make sense to me why I cared so much. Caleb, however, seemed to care for different reasons. Ugh, that's so typical. Inviting people without asking dad? Ugh, spare me for not being dad's little saint. Suddenly, Caleb's dad flew into a rage, making Eric's date shrink away from the scene. That's enough, Eric. If you don't want to be part of this family, then stay out. Gladly, father, gladly. He turned and left the party. I found myself following him. Eric, wait, I'm sure he didn't mean it. And you've known them for what, a week? Now you're an expert? I looked into his eyes and saw there was pain there, even though he tried to hide it. You do care. You act like you don't, but you do. His face was so tense, I thought he would snap. Instead, he sighed and turned away. Just leave me alone. Listen, I need to... As I rushed behind Eric, my toe caught in a bump in the sidewalk and the ground rushed up to me. When I sat up, my ankle was throbbing and Eric swooped me up in his arms. As he carried me back, I couldn't stop myself from falling for him. I knew this was wrong. I was with Caleb, but Eric was so much kinder and helpful and sort of a jerk, but he was always there when I needed him. After that day, I decided to keep my distance from Eric. Caleb was my boyfriend and I couldn't betray him. I spent my days working on making my business better and one day my brand ended up exploding all over social media. I had to investigate, so I went online and did some online digging. The root of it, I discovered, was none other than Eric's site where he'd promoted my line. He also left me an email in my inbox. I know you don't want any boosts or freebies, but us entrepreneurs have to stick together. Enjoy the extra press. You've worked hard and you deserve it. Sincerely, your tutor. I wanted to find him and thank him, but Caleb told me he was leaving the country to open up a store in England and he was taking off that night. Good riddance. You don't care that you'll never see your own brother again? Not really, no. But why do you care so much? I, I don't, I was just, wait, please don't tell me you have feelings for my brother. You do, don't you? Before I could say anything, Caleb snapped. After I supported your dumb business, you went behind my back and cheated on me with my brother? Caleb, I didn't cheat on you. Ugh, it's smothered all over your face. Dad was right about you. You're classless and shut up. You're the worst, Caleb. I had no idea you thought so low of me, but I'm glad you told me now. And by the way, eat bugs, we're done. I was horrified with how mean Caleb was and after that day, I broke all ties with him. I tried calling Eric multiple times, but he never returned my call. So I guess that was done too. Some months later, I opened up a popular boutique in the city, keeping Eric's note at the bottom of my register. I tried to keep my mind off him as best as I could and decorated my office with selfies of my parents enjoying their vacation in Greece. One night, just as I was closing the boutique, I heard a voice behind me. Does this come in amends? Eric! I rushed and hugged him tight. That's a reaction I could live for. Now tell me, do you have a size larger? I ate too many burgers in England. Taking the shirt he was holding, I went into the back room and found a large for him to try on. He too handed me one of his overpriced t-shirts. How is it? I feel like a unicorn. What about yours? Oh, you know, feels like a regular old t-shirt. <laughs> Laughing, he grabbed my shirt and pulled me in for a kiss. <laughs>